Hey guys, welcome back to Online Church. Thank you so much for joining us this Sunday or whatever day you're watching this on. To get through the news this week, we have not too much going on. We're still in summertime, so things are still very chill. But what we do have going on is the prayer project prayer. If you're not involved, get signed up on the website. It's getting the whole church community together and fitting in time slots where we're just always praying. Uh, there's someone always praying over a certain time of the day, uh, or at a certain time of the day, sorry, and yeah, it's incredible. We're getting a lot of slots filled up. We're getting slots doubled up, but we need more. We want more, and we're just excited to see what God's going to do through project prayer because prayer is good and we need to do more of it. So get signed up to that. That's going to be great. Life Groups. Life Groups is back on the second week of September. So if you're not involved in the Life Group, oh my goodness, get involved. Uh, we've got so many different kind of uh, Life Groups for all the age ranges. We've got Life Group uh, in the church building itself. We've got a Young Adults Life Group. There's a Life Group in Monaghan. All over the place we have connections all over the place that's going on and there's some are suitable for different age ranges, all that kind of stuff you you will find a life group that is suitable for you um yeah life groups are great we do the young alice one up in victory house and it's just a phenomenal time of seeing people grow uh, seeing a uh, young adults step into things that they've never really stepped into before and just really growing in their faith learning and just Doing, doing life and fellowship with each other. It's, it's phenomenal. I can't say how good it is enough. It's a great time. But get involved in Life Group if you're not already. We're so excited in September to have that back. Uh, Young Adults is coming back on the third week of September. So if you're not already, get that in your calendar. Or if you haven't already, get it in your calendar. Wasn't for that, obviously. Slightly biased, but it's going to be fantastic. So on the third week of September, we are back for Young Adults. So if you're a young adult, get involved. Give us a message. We'd love to get chatting to you. Um, nothing really much happened apart from that. If there's anything else, you'll keep, you'll know through our social media. So check out the Instagram, Facebook, and the website for all the updates. So thank you so much, guys. Enjoy this word and have a great Sunday.
not so hard to see it Took me so long to believe it You choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve and You take the broken things And raise them to glory You are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you've won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated With the one who has conquered it all I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it So let all the striving cease Oh, this is my victory You are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated
everybody, welcome back to Vibe. So good that you are with us. We're going to pray like we always do. I really encourage you, we are in a month of building a house of prayer. And you're thinking, what on earth does this mean? Well, we're not trying to build a physical building. We're simply saying we are the living stones of God. And why don't we build into our lives more prayer on a more consistent basis? passionate basis. That's literally what we're after. And we're trying to cover the ground six days a week, Monday to Saturday. You get Sunday off because it's good to rest. And we're going to morning, afternoon, and evening. I think we've got 35 people signed up so far, something like 35 to 40 people. Uh, we want to do a minimum of six months. Uh, we'd love you to do one slot minimum or a couple. It's 15 minutes. We're going to send you from September on prayer focuses, prayer points, reminders, things to focus in on. And I tell you what, I think we're going to be 18 times better than before because three times six is 18. Uh, and I think we're going to be 18 times better simply because as a church, as a body of believers, as a group of people, we're coming together and we are covering the ground in prayer. So I want to encourage you, we're going to pray today for various different things. Maybe it's a life issue. Maybe it's a financial issue. Maybe it's a health issue. I want to believe that God is going to do all things. We've been seeing incredible things. I want to tell you a quick story. Uh, a few months ago, we had a couple of people that came through. They'd had a bit of a rough night and they came through to one of our church services. A series of events happened that they were at church early, 9 a.m. in the morning, actually 8.45 uh, we got to meet with them, got them a cup of tea, and then it came to service. Well, one of the guys gave his life to Jesus that morning. Uh, we haven't heard sight since, but we knew something had happened. And we got word just the other day, he's been going to church faithfully over his last few months. His life has been turned around. He's talking faith, he's living faith, and God's doing something incredible. And I want to encourage you, God is doing things. If we can get people into our presence, into this space, into your space, because of the presence of God, that the, the incredible love and grace and mercy of God is on your life, and that literally Jesus lives inside of you, people's lives will be impacted. Uh, what an incredible story. Pray for divine encounters like that. Pray for the people that we meet every single day and ask God to use you and to give you a divine purpose of how to speak and how to listen and how to respond and how to move in those circun certain circumstances. So I want us to pray today. I want us to pray. Again, we're praying end the COVID because uh, we know it's still there. Some people are still nervous. So some things happening with that. I want to pray an end. And I want to pray for health today in Jesus' name, just health and strength and just an alignment to the things of God because everything else is trying to grab our attention. So come on, let's pray for a moment. Lord, we thank you today for your goodness. We pray, Lord, your peace in every circumstance. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, you come and move in our midst today, whether we're online, whether we're in the car, wherever we find ourselves, Lord. But I pray today you would move in our midst and you will affect us in our workplaces, in our family life, uh, with health and with strength, financial breakthrough, Lord. We ask you for health breakthrough, uh, just supernatural breakthrough on our families, on our kids, on our brothers and sisters, our moms and dads, the people we encounter. And let us realize that God wants to break through into our lives at any moment. I pray, Holy Spirit, would you come and just intoxicate us, fill us, uh, infuse us with your incredible mercy and grace and just the power of the Spirit all the way through our lives. We pray, Holy Spirit, we can't take a single step without you. Spirit of God, come and move inside all of our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Oh, wow. And guys, if you need any prayer, it's prayer at vibeni.com. Send us a message and we'll be faithful to pray. I tell you, there's nothing like the presence of God and there's nothing like praying to God because he knows everything you have need of before you even ask, but he invites us to have conversation. Uh, I want us to give today as well. And again, we always say thank you for your giving, but I want you to be bold with your giving. People have faith in your giving and you know as you give to God, God rewards, always rewards you back. And sometimes you hear of the great things that God has done with your giving, whether it be time or finance like we're talking about now, now, or you don't, but you know as you sow good seed into all that God's doing, it will reap a mighty harvest. So check out these slides for the next minute. Uh, be bold with your giving. Do it by faith, not under, under obligation, but by love because the Lord has blessed you so much. So give. Uh, thank you so much.
today we're going to continue talking about prayer. You know we've been talk talking about prayer over the last couple of weeks. We're going to continue to build this thing up as we get ready to start in September. We're going to have a week-long fast. I want to encourage you to be a part of that. We always say fasting. We believe from the Word. You see very clear it's fasting from food. If you want to fast from other things that are trying to take your attention, then go for it. But remember, the point is not to go on a diet. The point is to not eat. The point is to fill yourself with the things of God and to let your physical body know, I don't just be, I'm not just sustained by physical things, I am sustained by spiritual things first because God is the one that enables and supplies and sources my life. Well, today we're going to talk about a call to prayer or it's time to pray. And I really want us to delve into this. But before we do, come on, we'll pray just for a moment. Ask the Holy Spirit just to challenge us and really call us to his heart today in Jesus' name. So come on. Lord, we thank you, Holy Spirit, you're with us. We ask you, you're doing something exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Do not let us be fooled by this thing or that thing, but draw us closer to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to ask a big question. When do you pray? Not, not just specifically what time you pray, but when do you pray in the situations of life? And I think it probably boils down to maybe one or two major situations. The first one is, of course, I'm in trouble. Help me, Lord. And the second one is we want to advance the kingdom of God. So one, we're just trying to make it through. And the other, we're trying to push through. We're trying to move forward in the things of God. And so for you, it might be, when do I pray? Well, I pray when I'm stuck, when I'm in need, when I really need something, when I'm, when I'm desperate, uh, when I've got a problem, when I've got an issue, when I can't get through something, when I, when I have no answer. And I'm just trying to seek breakthrough. And that's a wonderful time to pray. But I also want to challenge us on the other side that we would pray for the advancement of the kingdom of God. That I want to see people saved. That I want to see my city saved. That I want to see revival break out. That I want to see the Spirit of God move through me and my life and the people of my life. And so we challenged our hearts last week and said in Ephesians 16, 17, 18, and 19, chapter 3, why don't we pray like this over our people? Where we'd have the riches of God's glory that would strengthen strengthen us in our innermost being, that we would realize that the power of the Holy Spirit, that Jesus himself lives inside of us, and that lastly, we'd be filled to all the fullness of God. What a radical prayer. And we challenge ourselves, Ephesians 3, 16, 17, 18, 19, who are we praying like that over this week? If you haven't done it, why don't you go and do it this week? Why don't you faithfully pray for someone for five days straight and believe for something incredible, and then restart it five days after that and go for somebody brand new again? And hit every person that you know and watch for transformation and watch for change because it's going to be good. But I want us to say, we got to pray, not just in the good times, but in the bad times. We got to pray not just in the bad times, but the good times. You know what I mean? Both sides of the coin, both seasons of our lives. We want to be people that prays all the way through. And I want us to go back to the Old Testament. We've been looking at Second Chronicles this last week or two about if my people would humble themselves and pray, then I will heal their land. The gist of verse uh, of chapter of chapter five, verse 17. Uh, but we want to keep moving forward in this thing. And we want to say to ourselves, okay, God, what are you saying to us as a church, as a body of believers, as we go into this house of prayer? And so way back in the Old Testament, you've got David, this incredible figure of God, man of God, says a man over after God's own heart. And then he had a son and his son was called Solomon. And that's where we get to in 2 Chronicles, where we get into that big verse that we read a couple of weeks ago. But I want to just set it up again and go back into it to ask ourselves more questions to help us go deeper into prayer. And here's what it says when God spoke to uh, King Solomon in 2 Chronicles verse, chapter 1, verse 7. It says, That night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask for whatever you want. Wow. I don't know if you've seen Aladdin or you've seen like, you know, the, the blue genie, you rub the lamp and the genie comes out and say, what's your three wishes? This is literally like the three wishes moment, only it's all in one. And God says to Solomon, what do you want? Man, this would have been an incredible request, eh? I mean, you know, when people come and ask you, what do you want? What you do subconsciously is you say to yourself, what could I get away with? Like, what, what's the most I could get? Or if you're on the flip side, you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I get for you, I get for you. But let's just play the game and you're a person that's wanting to receive something. So you say to yourself, how much could I ask for? And you always know there's a limit. But think of King Solomon. It's like, 
how much can I ask for? Well, uh, there's no limits when it comes to God. He is unlimited. He can give me whatever I want. I wonder what we would ask for. So let's play the game for a moment. What would you ask for? If God comes to you like a genie in the sense, he says, hey, what do you want? What would you ask for? Maybe you already know. I want this, this, and that. <laughs> I want all the money in the world. I want the best car you've ever seen. I, I want to be able to time travel. I, I like, or, or what King Solomon suggested or what God suggested to King Solomon and back then was, I want all your, my enemies to be dead. Uh, hopefully that's not the one that you wanted. But in war times back in with King Solomon and King David, there was war and this was a legitimate request. But for today, probably not a good one. The Bible says now in the New Testament that we should pray for our enemies, not kill them. So I wonder what you would ask for. Why don't you ponder just for a moment? What would I ask God if he give me this request and you knew he was going to fulfill it and it was going to be as simple as you ask, you get. What would you ask for? I mean, maybe it'd be money. Maybe it would be power. I want to be powerful. Maybe it would be honor. I want to be well respected. Or as we said, it might be the death of your enemies. But here's what Solomon asked for. And it wasn't just a a, a quick witted response. He legitimately asked for this. He asked for wisdom. And God was literally blown away. And he says, wow, because you've asked for wisdom, not only will I give you wisdom, but I'll give you all the money, the power, the fame, and everything else that goes with it. I'll give you the works. He asked for the right thing. And for a minute, I want you to think, because wisdom sounds really good, but I want you to think just for a moment, if I ask for wisdom, what am I really doing? I'm saying, I don't know. I haven't got an answer. So I want you to give me your response. I want you to give me your help. I want you to give me your wisdom. That's what King Solomon was saying. He says, I have a lot of people to lead. I have a great power here. I've got great influence, but God, I need to know what you would do. That's simply what he's saying. What do you say, God? This is what a life of prayer looks like. It's like talking to God, asking God, listening from God. And literally we're doing it from a place of humility because we recognize I have no clue. If you've been following Vibe over his last seven years, it's not that we didn't have a clue, but we could say it like that. It was better put like this. We've never been this way before. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if you've been this way before, then you go, right, okay, watch out for this turn. Remember to jump over here. Remember to do this. Remember to do that. But if you've never been this way before, then it's better just to admit it and say, I have not got a clue. But the world that we live in says I've got to be an expert, or at least I've got to know and pretend to be an expert. So we're afraid to say, I don't know. But what Solomon was really saying was, I don't know, Lord, but give me what you have. I I don't know what way to go, Lord, but give me what you have. And what an incredible response and what an incredible choice. James 1.5 says, if you lack wisdom, if anyone lacks wisdom, brother of Jesus, earthly brother of Jesus, sounds like a good response. You ask God, you should ask who gives generously to, with, to anyone without finding fault and it will be given to you. In other words, if you lack wisdom, we should ask for it. Like this is what God, part of what God does. You either learn wisdom through hard mistakes and experience or you ask God for it. And so if you're lacking wisdom today and you keep making the wrong choices or you keep thinking the same stuff over your life or you keep doing the same things, ask for better wisdom. Ask for, ask, say to God, look, I have no clue what I'm doing. Help me. I, I guess that's the root of all prayer. It's like, Lord, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I need to hear from you. Help me. I believe that that's the heart of what God wants to build our prayer lives on. And so wisdom for this this season for us as a church, as a body of believers, is that we would embed prayer into absolutely everything that we do. Like what Paul said in Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. What an incredible, incredible couple of verses there. They basically, Paul says, this is what I have learned. This is what you should go after. And so we got to ask ourselves the questions, the question, why is prayer so important? Like, why is it such a big deal? And why should I pray? pray? And why do I need God's wisdom? And why do I need to know the things of God? And here's what I'll say. It's because life is a battle between truth and lies. Can I find the truth that will set me free? Or will I be sucked into a lie, which I think is the truth, or maybe I know is not the truth, but I find myself there anyway. It's a battle between truth and lies, which makes perfect sense because God is all truth and the devil is all lies. And so I want the truth. 
I don't want lies. And that's really the battle that we're in. If God speaks truth, then the enemy speaks lies. And, and look, it's not the big ones that are going to catch you out. Like, you know, like, uh, well, maybe they may for a period of time. You're like, you know, no, there's nobody that loves you. And we can fall ourselves into that. What? That's just crazy. I mean, we don't know everybody, so we don't know. But we, we can live that lie. And that's a big lie, you know, or like nobody cares. I'm sure there's somebody or like I'm the only one that feels like this. No, definitely not. They're big lies the enemy tries to say this. And yet sometimes they can grab us. But what about the subtle ones? Uh, I could never, or it's not who I am, or we tend to say this in our part of the world, it's not my cup of tea. Well, what does that mean? You know, like, not my cup of tea? Get a new cup or get a new tea or change your flavor or change your drink. What a load of nonsense. We are not defined by our tea. We're not defined by, by a sand. And yet sometimes we can allow these things to get in the way of the call of God in our lives. Or let's play fill in the blank game, <laughs> like just for some fun. If I could just blank, then my life would be amazing. <laughs> we do this, you know, if I just had 10,000 pounds, then my life would be amazing. If I just had the degree that you had, then my life. If I just knew all of the Bible, then. They're like, all we're going to do is we're going to live in the past and we're going to live in regret instead of embracing now and saying, God, this is my time. You've called me. What can we do together? Or next one. If I had more time, I would do. <laughs> Look, you're never going to get more time. Time is, it's just, it's chronological. I mean, it doesn't change every day. A second doesn't jump. Our time is consistent. So you cannot find more time. You just have to use time better. <laughs> Years ago, we had a, I had a boss that I worked for and she says, you don't have a time problem. You've got a time management problem. That, that's really what's going on. There was a lot of truth in that. Uh, next one, fill in the blank. If I would change, but I can't because of <laughs> this. You know, like I would change, but you don't understand. This, this is like, yeah. and, and we can make excuses. And I don't want us to make excuses. I want us to be set free by the truth of God because his word is far better. There's something inherently wrong or different about me. Could, really? Or could God not overcome? Do we understand the authority of God? Do we understand scripture? I mean, the Bible is the final authority. Think about that now just for a moment. You may have been told something. You may even feel something. Uh, you may even have a piece of paper to tell you something. But the Bible is the final authority. It doesn't say that this is not true. It just says, here's greater truth. Put this on top. See how this weighs. Church, we've got to be mindful of this. Otherwise, it can fool us. Or even better and last one, and we'll move on. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, what a subtle lie. Do you really know what you're doing? Now, I don't want us to go around on eggshells. I don't want us to go around like crazy people not having a clue at all what we're doing. But do we really know what we're doing? That can be a subtle lie as well. You see, every day the devil is working on twisting the truth, seeds of doubt. Who will, who will know uh, like, I mean, not sin, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, no one will know, like, who will ever find out? It's just, it's, it's just something we sin. It's like, it's hurting nobody. Pride, false promises, shortcuts, cheats, sin. That's what false promises do. They lead to shortcuts, cheats, and sin. See, the devil's all about lies, which is rooted in fear. And God's all about power to overcome those lies, which is rooted in in love. And so I read 2 Timothy 1 7 over your heart. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Here's the most wonderful thing that God has given us choice. We have the power to say no to things. We have choice to change things. Now, depending on how we live and depending on the voices that come into our hearts and heads, it will dictate our choices. But I want to tell you, if we can just break free, if we can get into his presence, if we can just get a glimpse and crack the crevice of what's going on in our lives, then you can find yourself walking into breakthrough because we have been given the power of the Spirit and it gives us power and love and a sound mind. God gives us his choice. We have God's power over the lies to overcome and we win the battle with prayer, with worship, and with the word. And if we can build these foundations into our lives, guys, then we are going to see something incredible take place. Who has seen what God can do if we could fully commit on some of these things, surrender, allow his heart to move through us, allow the spirit of God to move through us? I believe we will see a city saved. Keep that in the forefront of your thinking. And so Solomon had a plan as a king because Solomon was not there just for any old purpose. He had a plan for the Ark of the Covenant. He had a plan for the presence of God because back in the Old Testament, it was carried about in this Ark 
built of solid gold. Inside was the tablets of Moses and, you know, this presence, it carried the presence of God. And it was just a symbolism of here or was reality and a symbol of here's the presence of God. But the beautiful thing is in the New Testament, we go from it being held in a temple of gold to being held in the temple of flesh. Because we are the people of God. We are the men and women of God. And so Solomon gets this plan. He says, I want to bring the temple of God. I want to bring the spirit of God into the temple of God. I want to bring the Ark of the Covenant. I want to bring his spirit into a temple where we can come and worship, where we can bring the right honor, where we can bring the right respect, and we're going to build this incredible building. I mean, it sounds awesome, and it was awesome. So he goes on this journey of what are we going to do? And it takes seven long years or maybe it flew, I don't know, but seven long years, or seven years sounds like a reasonably long time, and they built this temple. And now we get to the, the part where he's about to dedicate the temple, and watch what he does. He doesn't do it with like a big, you know, it's like it's not for a show thing. It's not for like, like put it in the papers, this or that thing. No, no, he says, I want to dedicate this building to God. I want to pray. I want to pray that the Spirit of God now would come and just do something, that God would just come and fill His temple. And so he prays to dedicate the building. And this is what happens. 2 Chronicles 7, 1, when Solomon finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled it. Imagine that. Just the presence of God just pushes everybody else out. Come on, that's what we want. When all the Israelites saw the fire come and dine and the glory of the Lord above the temple, they knelt on the pavement with their faces to the ground, face down, and they worshiped and gave thanks to God, saying, He is good and His love endures forever. Wow. Now, this is Old Testament, but I tell you what, there's something about the presence of God. When we pray, it gets poured out. There's something about the presence of God when it gets poured out after we pray that we just get ourselves face down before the Lord. And of course, we read it in verse 14, and we'll read it again just in a few moments. It says, "Of my people would humble themselves and go face down and start to seek my face. Then my spirit will be poured out. There's something about surrender before the Lord. There's something about buying in His presence. There's something about realizing that we need His help. There's something about realizing I need your wisdom, God, because my wisdom is not enough. And what I love about these first few verses of chapter 7 is that we remind us that we serve a supernatural God. And we see the hand of God move. When we begin by faith, we begin to pray. When we begin to talk to God, when we start to have conversation with God, when He starts to become the loudest voice in our lives, when He starts, when he starts to know our voice better than anybody else's because that's the one that we talk to the most. I'm talking to God. This is why Paul said, I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying, not because I want to look good, not because I want to feel good, because I've recognized who else would I want to talk to anyway? Who else is better than him? Who else loves me more than him? Who else will care for my voice better? Who else will tell me the things that he can tell me? Nobody. And so church, come on team, vibe, come on people. We want to fall in love with this presence. We want to fall in love with our creator. He's the lover of our souls. We want to know his voice and we want him to know our voice because there's just something going on between us. There's this prayer, the conversation. And so we need the presence of God. It filled the physical temple then, but we need the presence of God to come and fill our fleshly temple today. I want him to fill us and our buildings. So when people come and we've heard about, we want more. I want it that when people go into this building, they just begin to fall under the presence and the power of God. People just start to relax in the chair like you cannot believe because the presence of God is on them. When we would come on Sundays to worship or Wednesdays, wherever we find ourselves, we would be face down because the presence of God was so thick. It wouldn't just be a choice, it would be a requirement because the heaviness of God is just ascending in this place. Come on, church, I'm getting excited. I don't want our camera to break because otherwise the anointing's going to come. But I tell you what, come on, Holy Spirit, move in our hearts. Verse 14, then this is what God spoke. You got to understand, this is what God spoke to Solomon after he dedicated the temple and the Spirit of God and the fire of God begins to move through the whole place. If my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face, face down, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. Wow. 
Church, this is what we're building as a house of prayer. What would it look like if we began to get face down? Not just in the physical, because we can do that, but in our hearts, in our minds, where it was literally, God, it's you. You're all that I want. God, you're filling my life. And I want your wisdom because mine is not enough. And we were at the conference just the other day and they made a great point and I want to just pull it out for our last few moments today. And it's this point of seek my face. Isn't it incredible when we think about our prayer lives and maybe we need to do a stock tick. Maybe we need to analyze our prayer lives and we say to ourselves, I wonder how much time, let's take our prayer life first and then we'll go to our life. I wonder how much time do I spend praying to the beauty and majesty and lordship of God versus the amount of times I ask for help. <laughs> And the point that I made at the conference was, you got the face or you got the hands. And it doesn't say to seek his hands, and that's what he can do, and the Lord loves to do things. Remember, he's generous beyond measure. But he says, if you would seek my face, and that strategic and that detail is very, very important. Will you seek my face? Not about what I can do for you, not like the genie thing. Because remember, everything God does, there's purpose and there's, there's plan to it. And when he asked Solomon, what do you want? I think he was asking Solomon a bigger question. Solomon, will you seek my face or will you seek my hands? And Solomon in that moment realized, wow, Lord, what I really need is you. I, I don't just want the things you can give me. What I really need is you. And church, this is the journey we're going on. If we could go on a journey of where it's not just, Lord, give us the money for Project Possible, and we would love that, but it's not about it. God, we want you first. If we can get you, God, because we know just like King Solomon learned, if we can get you, we get everything. God doesn't come stingy. He doesn't come without all the blessings of healing and breakthrough and transformation. But if we get him, we get everything. But if we just want the things he can give us, well, do we then start to play into Aladdin and the genie idea? And if I could just have what I want because it's just about my life and my things, God, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want to seek you. I want to seek your face. You see, the truth is we all want God to give us things. Dreams, desires, relationships, possessions, fame, glory. And a lot of it God invites us to pray for and ask for. Why wouldn't we want healing? Why wouldn't we want to see our friends saved? Why wouldn't we see, want to see the finance for buildings and, and mission trips and all of that? Why wouldn't we? It's good stuff. But let's go greater truth. God says, seek my face. Worship me, not my hands and what I can do for you. Worship me alone. Worship me alone. Have no other gods before me. Isn't it incredible that even our prayer lives could be building idols? Wow. <laughs> wow. God's saying, if I give you that thing, it becomes an idol in your life. Uh, even our prayer language, or the way we're talking to God sometimes, the way that we speak to Him, it's, I, it's idols, not worship. And God says, if my people would humble themselves. And this is sometimes where it gets really hard because it's not easy to humble yourself. It's not easy to go low. It's not easy to go to God and, and calm your heart just for a moment. Because remember, you're living a lifestyle where it's fast paced and there's a lot going on. And God, I just need your help. <laughs> He's like the rescue, you know, like, uh, what do you call it? Like the, the life, uh, the life uh, not the life vest, but the life ring. It's like, but God, do we treat him like that? It's like, God, I'm just trying to swim. I'm just going to get through it. Everyone was going really well. And now I'm sinking, so throw me the life ring. Throw me the life jacket. Get me out of here, God. Help me. Rescue me. And if we build our lives like that, then all we'll ever get is and seek are the benefits of God, but we'll miss out on Him. And I want us to seek you, Lord. And I want to seek you, Lord. Because if my people would seek my face, if my people would seek me, they'll get everything else. I'll see, I'll see their, the, the things that they're asking for. I'll do them. I know your heart. I'll heal their land. I'll forgive them. I'll stir up the land. And I will see great things take place. Second Chronicles 1 7. That night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. What if we ask differently today as we finish? What if we ask for wisdom? And the wisdom is simply this. I don't know, God, even what to ask for. What do you say? God, I'm not even sure what to ask for. I don't want to mess things, this thing up. I'm not really that sure what I need. God, you tell me this 
is asking for wisdom. This is humility. And so we're going to pray today. And I'm going to believe that the Lord would come and he would just do something in your heart, something in your life, where he would just grab a hold of you and the Holy Spirit would change you because we're building something. And right now, what we're trying to do over the next few weeks, if you haven't got it yet, is almost reset our own hearts as we get ready to go into a minimum of six months of praying. And whatever slot you've got, 15, 20 minutes every single day. But you might actually find that it's better than you thought. You may actually find that it's not just I'm doing it because I have to, or I'm not just doing it because everybody else in church is doing it. You begin to do it because you want to. And 15 minutes is not enough because you start to get addicted to the presence of God. And you start to realize, I don't even bother going in with this night. All I want to do is go and seek His face because all I want is Him. But I want to encourage you as we go to prayer. Look, we're going to believe that God's going to touch our hearts. And, and, and I want that. And, I, and I'm mindful of that. But here's what I'm also thinking about as well, is that I, I, wanted to, I want God to just do it all for me. It's easier that way, isn't it? But part of building a house of prayer is that we're going to do it faithfully, day in, day out. Maybe you're picking two slots a week. You're doing Monday morning, you're doing Friday evening. You're going to do it for six months. I mean, consistent. Think of the habit you're building. Think of the discipline that you're building into your heart and your mind. And we're good with that. But if we don't push out on that, sometimes we can leave our faith as in, well, I'm just not feeling like it. Or, yeah, I've kind of just moved on. Come on, we're going into mature believers, we're going to discipline our hearts. Of course, we want to touch from God. Of course, the Holy Spirit's going to lead us and guide us, but we're playing our part too. Right, let's pray. Lord, I thank you today for those that are listening and everybody that's involved in what we're doing. Lord, I pray there's something that's coming over our hearts that says, I want more of Him. I'm not going to be satisfied with anything else. Lord, we want your wisdom. We want the wisdom of Solomon that says, literally, he was saying this, I don't know. He, he was busy saying, I don't know enough. I may even be stupid. I need more of you, God. So give me your wisdom. Give me your help. Lord, it takes humility to recognize that in our hearts. I pray we'd recognize that today. I pray for those that need to recognize a Savior. Maybe you need Jesus. You've never put your trust in Jesus. You've tried this way. You've tried that way. You've listened to this thing. You went this way, but it did not work. And who else is going to forgive you of your sins? So I pray today, Lord, for those that don't know you. The Bible is very clear. If we would believe in our hearts and confess with our minds that Jesus is Lord, then we'd be saved. Our sins would be forgiven. We'd be made a new creation on the inside and the Spirit of God will come and dwell inside of us and suddenly now we have a help for going forward. Lord, I pray right now anybody that needs to say yes to you would do it today in Jesus' name. And I encourage you, make a bold decision because God is urging you and calling you to Himself. Say yes. But Lord, I pray for us as Christians. I pray for us as believers. Lord, you are giving us wisdom to go forward. Lord, you're giving us a path to go forward. You're calling us to continuous prayer, just constant communication, constant conversation with you. Lord, that is your heart's desire. Let it become our heart's desire as well. I want to hear from you. I want to speak to him. I want to know his voice. I want him to know my voice. Holy Spirit, come and transform us. Come and nudge us. Come and uh, just encourage us forward, challenge us forward, and allow us to create great discipline in our hearts that radically transforms our future and our lives forevermore. Lord, I thank you that we're not here for ourselves. We're here to make a difference in this world. And so with your heart and with the supernatural power of God, come and fill not only this building, not only the places that we go to, our homes and our churches, but come and fill us like you did all the way back in that early temple, in the first temple. Come and flood us and fill us with all the fullness of you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Guys, thank you so much for being involved today. Thank you so much for tuning in. We always say, why don't we share this with someone? Watch it again, take notes. It'll give you prayer points. It will allow you to go forward and say, hey, what am I praying for this week? Help you be consistent. Help you be focused on the things that God's calling you to. Uh, why don't you pray? Pray about some of the things that God's spoken to your heart about today. Pray for some people this week. Why don't you reach out and talk to some people, share your faith, pray and see great things happen as the Holy Spirit moves through you. Enjoy this last song. We're so glad you're with us. We're so glad you're doing this. Uh, and we pray that the Holy Spirit is going to move through your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Every voice I raise, I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I'll raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. 
Louder. 